Hey everybody, this is a quick crash course on how to code using ChatGPT. Now I consider myself an expert because I've coded using ChatGPT for over a hundred hours now. I've tried different things so I know what works and what doesn't. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it for yourself. This is gonna be my process. Feel free to tweak it to what suits you. But the first thing you need to know is the model. Which model in ChatGPT should you use? I've tested them all and I am the biggest fan of O3. Now, if you want unlimited O3 usage, you're gonna have to buy the pro plan. And I understand that's pretty expensive. Right now it's $200 US per month. But if you compare it to hiring an actual developer and how long that developer would take on completing your project, $200 per month is nothing. Obviously, you can try with the different models. You could even try with GPT-4 Omni, but you're probably gonna run into a lot of problems. Maybe start with that if you're on a budget and then move to something like O3 later. Now, ChatGPT just released O3 Pro, and in a previous video, I tested this new model. It just takes way too long to generate responses. We're talking like 10 minutes per response. That's way too slow for coding, and it still makes a ton of mistakes. O3 is really fast. You can search the web. It has a large contacts window. You can paste in images as well. This is my favorite model. Next, I set everything up within a Google Cloud Console project. That way we can use Cloud Run to execute our code on the cloud. We can use Google Cloud Buckets to store our files and use Google Cloud Shell Editor to actually run and test our code. Now, just to show you what's possible, my new app, Creo.ai, spelled K-R-I-J-O dot A-I. If you look in the top right corner, you'll also see a watermark. All of that was created using ChatGPT. Even the watermark step for free users was created using those models. And this is an AI video editor, and I had an idea for an AI project. I don't know how to code using Python, so I had to use ChatGPT to create the code. And it did a wonderful job because look, I have an entire project built with ChatGPT and it works from start to finish. For you, you're gonna wanna start with a basic concept. So what are you thinking? What do you wanna build? Everybody has ideas. And I bet you have wrote some in your notepad on your phone. I want you to pull one of those out right now and get started using ChatGPT. Here's a simple starting prompt. I want to code a project using Python that automatically generates LinkedIn posts using the OpenAI API and then publishes them to LinkedIn using the API. I'm gonna to go to tools, search the web, because it's gonna to need to know the updated information on the OpenAI API and also the LinkedIn API. And your first tip is to think about whether it needs new information or it can generate code on old information. With APIs, their documentation changes so frequently. Anytime you're using another model, another software, another service, always search the web. If you don't need any outside influence, you can probably turn this off and O3 will just use its own training data to spit out the response. But let's turn it on, send it in. In the Google Cloud Shell editor, click to create a new folder, call it something like LinkedIn app, maybe linkedin.py. And there it opens up the notepad within Google Cloud Shell Editor. And then in ChatGPT, you can read through the response and start pasting in the code. There we go. Here's the next one. The next one's here. And then wiring it all together. If you don't want to put all the code into one file, you can organize the project based on what ChatGPT says. Here, they want your folder named Auto LinkedIn. So let me do that. Then it wants autopost.py. Let's add a new file. And that's this number two, LinkedIn client.py, add a new file, LinkedIn, and we'll copy this text here, paste it in. After pasting all of the code in, I'd usually ask it, how do I run this code as a test in my Google Cloud Shell editor? And here it will tell you to go into the correct folder. You do that using CD, and it was called auto LinkedIn. And then you'll have to install all of the requirements to run the code, inject your secret keys into the environment, for this project, you need an open AI secret key, a LinkedIn client ID, and a LinkedIn client secret. You'll have to authorize your LinkedIn profile using OAuth, and then test it using Python autopost.py. Let me show you a real example of a change that I want to make to my app so you can see my process from start to finish. First, I'll describe to ChatGPT what I want to accomplish. I wrote, I have an AI video editing Python app. In the output, sometimes there are clicks and pops, and brackets very few, 
I want to remove those when I automatically remove the silence. So I'll double enter, do a couple asterisks, then go edit.py, grab my entire script. It says those little pips are almost always caused by a single sample discontinuity in the waveform after you splice the chunks together or by tiny mouth handling noises that were already present in the original recording but become more obvious once you delete the silent part. So it tells me what I'm already doing and then it will show me which code to add. So again, I'm not a coder, so I have no idea where to add this. So I'll copy this and go, where do I add this code to the script? Okay, they want me to add it to create a final video. Scroll down until you see filter graph. So I'm gonna go to here, control F, go filter graph. Okay, it appears to be right here and it wants me to replace that whole block. So this part here wants me to delete it and replace it with this. So I'm gonna copy all of this. Let's paste it over and I'm gonna highlight all of this and hit tab. That puts it on the correct line. And just make sure here, filter graph is in line with X fade, if and else. Filter graph, X fade, if and else. There we go. I like to remove the comments. Those are just extra tokens when you send it into ChatGPT. So let's remove all the comments and then this part here. And then when I think I have it correct, I'll copy the entire code again and then write confirm I've made the correct changes and then paste the entire code in. Usually they never one shot it. You're gonna have to do this two or three times because every time you make a change, even if it was correct, it's gonna look through, it's gonna double check its code and realize that it made mistake or plug holes that it had before. So this is actually pretty lucky. It says it's gonna work right from the start. It is suggesting minor style and safety nits, like changing the X fade seconds to 0.2 or to guard against unlikely case of N equals two. Usually I'll just test how it is. And what I did was create a Google document called test in cloud shell. And it has the entire line that I need to paste into the terminal. This installs all the requirements and you need to do this each time because every time you refresh the browser, it starts a brand new Google Cloud Shell editor. And then I also save the code that I need to use in the terminal to test all of my changes. If I test the code and it ends up working correctly, I'll save it as a bookmark or version by copying the entire code, creating a new version number in my drive. For example, version 22, new silence detection, and then paste that in. So if I ever make a future mistake and I have to go back to a previous version, I can just copy all of this code and paste it into my project. So again, the steps are choose the best model. Again, I like O3. To have unlimited usage of O3, you need to be on the pro plan. I do one feature at a time just so the model doesn't get confused and convoluted. I paste my entire coding project into each prompt so it knows exactly what I'm working with. Every time I make a change to the code, based on a suggestion from ChatGPT, I'll copy the entire code and go, please confirm I've made the correct changes, paste the code in. It's gonna look over your code, and there we go, looks perfect. I ask it what I need to install in the environment to test the code, so that way every time there's a browser reset, I can follow the testing steps. Like here, I gotta go into that new folder, and then I gotta go and grab this entire line. It installs all of the requirements for my project. Then I can test my code, pasting that in and hitting enter and seeing if it works. If the code worked and saved properly to the bucket, I would copy the working code and create a new version in a Google Doc. Version 22, working production code and pasting it in. If you wanna see what's possible with ChatGPT coding, Take a look at Creo.ai, spelled K-R-I-J-O dot A-I. I'll leave a link in the description below. This AI video editor removes filler words, all of your duplicates and mistake. It automatically edits out your silence. It adds optional background music or subtitles. It creates all the social media assets. That's the video's title, description, hashtag, tags, and thumbnail. And then it auto posts to your YouTube channel. I built this to speed up my West GPT YouTube channel process. I create a raw video. I upload that raw video. I put it into this app and it does everything for me. If you're a YouTuber or wanna be YouTuber or an agency or content creator, 
Check this out. I'm giving you 30 free minutes of video editing time to test the software. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.